I'm Lisa Martin with theCUBE. We're on the ground at Google for the sixth annual Cloud Now Top Women in Cloud Awards. Very excited to be joined by award winner and CUBE alumni, Erica Windish, founder and CTO of IO Pipe. Welcome back to theCUBE, Erica. Thank you. Great to have you here and congratulations on being one of the top women in cloud. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what, tell me, when you heard about that you were being recognized, what did that mean to you um, in where you are in your career? Well, oh gosh. Um, I mean, it, it really meant, like, it was really big for me. Um, I, I, I actually wasn't really expecting it. Um, I, I think, you know, I was nominated and like I totally forgot. I think somebody had mentioned to me that they were nominating me and I had no idea about it. Like I totally forgot about it. And, um, but I mean, it's just, for me, it's just so validating um, because as much as I've, well, one, because I've done a lot of interesting things in cloud and in tech, but I've never really gotten a lot of recognition for that um, and also, uh, just recognition, um, I, mean, I mean, to be quite honest, I'm transgender. So, like, the fact that I was recognized, um, you know, as a woman, you know, top 10 women in cloud computing was, like, extra important and special for me. Oh, that's awesome. So tell me about your path to being where you are now. Were you always interested in computers and technology? Mm -hmm. um, or is that something that you kind of zigzagged your way to? Yeah, well, it was one of these things, I guess I had some interest. Um, when I was um, a child, we had like basic um, exercises printed in our math books, but our teachers never went over it. Um, so I got kind of interested, and I would read through those chap like those little appendums in my math books, and I would start teaching myself basic. Um, and I picked up a Commodore 64 and it didn't work, and I taught myself basic, like more basic with those manuals. Um, and I just like had like these little tiny introductions to technology and just self-taught myself everything. Um, eventually, you know, using like a high school job to buy myself books um, and just teaching myself from those books. Um, managed to grab Linux on some floppy disks, installed it and tried to figure out how to use it. Um, but I didn't really have a lot of like mentors or anything um, that I could really follow. Um, at best, there were other kids at school who were into computers, and I just wanted to try and like do what they're doing or do better than they were doing. I love that self-taught. You yeah. knew you liked this, and you were not afraid to try. Hey, let me teach myself. Yeah, that's really inspiring, Erica. Yeah. So, speaking of inspiring, tell me about the IO Pipe story. So, you're a TechStars company. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about TechStars. What that investment in IO Pipe means? Yeah. Um, so, I started. Um, I, I guess I first started IO Pipe uh, two years ago, and I uh, found the co-founder um, Adam Johnson, who joined me. Um, and we applied for TechStars, got in, and that was like the first validation that we had uh, from outside of ourselves, um, and maybe one angel investor at that time. And I mean, that was a really big deal because it really helped accelerate us, give us validation, allow us to make our first hire, and they also taught us a lot about how to refine our elevator pitch and how to uh, raise money effectively. Um, and then we ended up raising money, of course. So uh, with the end of Techstars, we had a lot of visibility and that helped us uh, raise a two and a half million dollar seed round. Wow, so a really good launching pad for you. Yes, yeah. That's fantastic. So tell us a little bit more about the technology. I know that there's AWS Lambda. We just mm -hmm. got back from reInvent last week. So tell us a little bit more about exactly what you guys do. Oh yeah, so um, what we do is we provide a, um, a service that allows developers to get better insights uh, into their application. They get observability into the application running on Lambda, as well as um, uh, debugging and profiling tools. So you can actually get a profile Data, profiling data out of your Lambda um, and load that into like Google DevTools and get flame graphs and like dig in deep into which function called which function inside of each function call. So every Lambda invocation, you can really dig down and see what's happening. We have things like custom metrics and alerts for that. Um, so you can like, for instance, um, we, we built this bot. Um, it's a, I built it in two days. It's a Slack bot that does, um, if you put an image in a Slack, it will run it through Amazon recognition and tell you, describe the objects in it. 
and it's and describe it. So, um, for instance, if you have like visually impaired members of your team, they can find out what was in the images that people paste it, put, uh, paste it. I built it in only two days, and I could use um, our tool, let's say, to extract well how many images were or how many objects were found in that image, whether or not a specific object was found in that image, and then we can create alerts around those and do searches based on those and get statistics out of our product on the data that was extracted from those images. Um, so that was really cool. And we actually announced um, that feature, the profiling feature, um, for min at Midnight Manus at reInvent. Um, so it was like the opening ceremony for reInvent. It was just us, Andy Jassy, and Shaquille O'Neal. And we were, yeah, and we launched our product, and we did the demo of this um, Slack bot, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> So you were there last week then? I was there. We were there last week. And we were, yeah, we were actually like the first, um, I, um, myself, my co-founder, one of our engineers were up there. And we were the first non-AWS speakers at the entire reInvent. It was wow. really amazing. Amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So with all the cool announcements that came out last week on Lambda, serverless, even new features uh, that were announced for recognition, how does that either change the game or maybe kind of ignite the fire under under you guys even a little bit more? Well, I think one of the, the biggest announcements uh, relevant to us was Cloud9. And you know, we, we knew that this was going to happen. Um, Amazon acquired them a year ago, year and a half ago. And, um, you know, but they finally launched it. And they really, you know, they, they really doubled down on providing a much better experience for developers of Lambda to make it easier for developers to really build and ship and run that code on Lambda, um, which provides a much tighter um, experience for them uh, so that they can you know, onboard into things like IOPipe more easily. Um, that was, so that was really exciting, because I think that's really going to help uh, with the adoption of Lambda. Um, and some of the other features, like you know, um, Alexa for work, was, is really interesting. Um, it will probably just, again, you know, a lot of Lambda, um, Alexa apps are built on top of Lambda. So all of these things, you know, are going to just provide, of course, value to my own company because, you know, we can tell you things like, well, you know, how are users interacting with those Alexa skills? Um, but I think this is generally exciting, right? Because there's just so many really cool, I mean, honestly, I don't know how many things they announced at this reInvent. They were just really amazing. Um, another one that I really loved was um, Fargate. Um, and because I mean, I came from Docker. I used to be a maintainer of the Docker um, uh, engine, and um, something that I was pushing for at that time um, in OpenStack and in other projects was the idea of just containers completely as a service without the VM management side of the things, right? Because with like ECS, you had to manage um, virtual machines, and I was like, well, that is little, like, why, I don't want to manage virtual machines. I just want Amazon to give me containers. So I was really excited that they finally launched uh, Fargate to offer that. So last question in our last sure. couple of minutes here. <laughs> Tell me about the culture and your team that you lead um, at, at IO Pipe. You were saying before when you were, you know, when you were a kid, you were really self-taught and very mm -hmm. um, inspired by your own desire to learn. But tell me a little bit about the people that work for you and how you help inspire them. Oh gosh, well, um, I think first of all, we are, um, right now we're nine people. Um, we, I would say about four or five of us are underrepresented minorities in tech in one way or another. Um, it's um, really been fantastic that we've been able to have that uh, level of diversity and inclusion. Um, the I think part of that is that we start it very diverse. So like, you know, a lot of companies will say, well, one of the problems with not having enough diversity is that they hire within their, their networks. Well, we hire within our networks, but we start it very diverse in the first place. So, you know, that organic growth was very natural and very diverse for us, whereas that organic hiring growth um, can be problematic if you don't start in a very diverse place. So I think that's been really great. I think that um, the fact that we have that level of diversity inclusion um, in, you know, with our employees is kind of inspiring um, because a lot of workplaces just aren't like that in tech. Um, it's really hard to find, and granted, we're only nine right now. You know, I would really hope that we can keep that up, and I would like to actually make our workforce even more 
uh, diverse than it is today. Um, but we, yeah, I, I think it's, um, I don't know, I just think it's fantastic. And like, I, I want that, I want what we're doing to be a role model and an inspiration to other companies that say, yes, you, you can do this. And also to work people in the workforce, like, yes, you can be a woman in tech. Yes, you can be trans in tech. Yes, you can be non-binary tech. Um, which I am binary, but we have non-binary people on staff. And um, I don't know. I just, I, I hope that's inspiring to people. And also, like, myself being a transgender founder, like, I maybe know of one or two other people who are transgender founders. It's very uncommon. And I hope that also is an inspiration for people. Well, I think so. I'm speaking for myself. I find you very inspiring. And you you seem to be someone that's really known from the beginning. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm interested. I'm going to try it. Starting a company, I'm going to try it. And it sounds like you guys are, are very purposefully building a culture that's very inclusive. And so I, I think that that as well as your recognition as one of the top women in cloud, be proud of that, Erica. That's awesome. Thank you. And you got to meet Shaquille O'Neal. I got to meet Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. I got to see the photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Erica, for joining us back on theCUBE. Congratulations on the award, and we look forward to seeing exciting things that you do in the future. Okay, great, thank you. I'm Lisa Martin on the ground with theCUBE at Google for the Cloud Now Top Women in Cloud Awards. Thanks for watching, bye for now.